Oh my God. He was, I mean, he was so talented and he had such an amazing career already. Just to go up and work with him, number one, was kind of, you know, you're nervous. And then he's just so intense. I was terrified, but it was perfect. I mean, for the part, it was perfect that I was terrified. He was scary. He was scary, and he was over, written as way over the top, yeah. and he embraced it in a way that just kind of made it just believable. He was a bit, he was a bit of a nut, yeah. but he was great. Uh, he says my favorite line, and you know, the line was, he says, killer clowns from outer space, but John improvised, he goes, killer clowns from outer space, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I wish we could have taken credit for the holy shit, but it was uh, John Vernon. <laughs> I, I didn't think he was scary. I was just, I was such a big fan. I was so excited to work with him that, you know, I had to actually act scary because I was just so excited to be in the same scene with the guy. He was just, he was bigger than life character, you know? He was bigger than life. Um, I want to know in part two, are you going to show the clowns planet? A lot of people ask. Yeah, uh, at this point I'll leave it like we don't really know. But I we think we'll give some inkling into how clown society works yeah. a little. I think you see glimmers. Remember, this is a four-part trilogy. We don't want to blow our wad. Yeah. So we It'll have to build it slowly four. to that. Uh, you will see little by little, you'll learn how the clowns think and how the clowns do things, why they do things. I think you might be disappointed, it's just that they just do it because they're clowns. <laughs> really You'll simple. definitely know a lot more, it, the, the, definitely the fortune cookie will be opened a lot more than it was in the first one. But I don't, we don't want to give away everything right away, right? So, definitely a lot more, but not the whole shit. There are clown secrets to be revealed. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. Alright, so what's the average airspeed of an unladen swallow? Well, that'd be uh, a blue, blue. That, that, would be, well. that would be 2.3 uh, hundred miles uh, per second squared, I think. Wait, South American or North American? <laughs> <There you go. laughs> All right, so you pass. So, uh, so what, what were the greatest gags that you guys either created or actually shot that didn't make it into the final film? You know what? We eventually, the one that came closest to not being included was the floating clown gag. Um, the one that got blown was the, the car flying off the cliff. We were warned. We had a, a clown gag. The car was going to, you know, you know, be catapulted off the thing into the beach, fly hundreds of feet in the air, explode, and land on the beach. We said, go, warn back. They, they warned us to move a half a mile back. Keep moving back. Keep moving back. You don't want anyone to be injured. So we're standing there on the beach a mile away watching the car be towed. All of a sudden we hear pink. And it started rolling, rolling, rolling. It hit the edge of the cliff and went <laughs> But that actually is in the movie because we didn't have a second car. We didn't have a chance and we had to, had to do it again. But there was a, a gag in the clown uh, spaceship fun house where we were running through the maze. They're supposed to walk across a tightrope. And um, it was just, it was lit badly and uh, the gag just didn't work. We actually the tightrope that was straight across and then it went up staggered like stair steps and our, our, our cast was supposed to run over it, but it was, it was lit so yeah, poorly. The, the whole gag relied on the tightrope being lit really brightly against a black limbo. So as the guys are walking on what you perceive as a, white, a long line, all of a sudden the rope starts going up and down like a staircase. It was a really kind of neat 2D type effect. So when we get dailies, it looked great on set. The illusion worked to the, the eye and everything, but then when we got dailies, which is the, the process film back, we see our actors running on platforms. It just was, yeah, the exposure was wrong. The DP made a mistake, made an error in, in, in the exposure. That's, so that's, that's not the, in the film. The good and the bad of the low budget filmmaking is it sometimes <laughs> leads to brilliant invention. And other times, you just don't have the money to do it again and to do it right. I, I remember Suzanne and I watching the car come off the car go off the camp. Just, it literally edged over and just like tilted down. Bang. <laughs> and we kind of said, oh, okay. What, how long does it take? Do we do it again? And they looked at us and went, You guys, it's a low budget movie. We, we don't have another car. That's it. <laughs> but here, here's what happened. Make it work. There was a tow line, and the car was supposed to tow it. And when the, the car, when the truck pulled it, 
They forgot to remove the sandbags from the tires. The car was on a slight incline, so it didn't roll prematurely. They put a little sandbag under it to stop the tow line snapped, so we didn't get the 60 mile an hour speed to jettison over the edge of the cliff. So it just went. But it's it funny, like even something as simple, again, in the, in the maze, there's a, a, a room they run through that was full of balloons. Oh, you, you hated that. <laughs> Yeah, you because know, every time you'd go through them, they would pop, and it was it would look bad. It, the sound was awful, and uh, just I can hear Suzanne screaming every time a balloon went up. <laughs> <laughs> and they were all going off. I mean, you touch the balloons, and they would pop. I don't know if it was static electricity or what. In hindsight, maybe it should have been rubber balls that looked like balloons, you know, right? <laughs> well, okay. Was, hey guys, I got a quick question. Do you ever, when it first came out, and it was all done? I'm not, I, I'm not sure how it was received at the beginning, but did you ever look back and go, what did I just create? And it's a, sort of look at it going, hmm, this could either break me or make me. You know what, we liked what we did, and we, if we enjoyed it, we figured we were hoping that the audience would enjoy it, and that sort of proved out. We weren't worried, you know, that, that, that we had, we were satisfied with what we had done. Uh, we knew we were pushing it out there. We, we appealed to our sense of humor and action. Um, uh, actually, it did pretty well in Los Angeles. Uh, there's a, a local newspaper, the LA Weekly, and uh, we opened on Thursday, and when we closed on Thursday, which is when the LA Weekly comes out, it was reviewed as the pick of the week, but it was the day it closed. So we didn't gain any, anything from that promotion, from that good review. Um, but it was a, a movie that we liked, that we made a movie that we would like to go and see because it was reminiscent of all the movies we grew up, you know, we watched when we were kids. So the fact that it's found an audience in, in you guys, uh, this and this long after the fact, is really kind of, you know, heartwarming to us. It's funny because it's a movie that we like, so we're glad you like it as well. I mean, we look at it, I enjoy it, I see the merits, I know what's good with it, I know what's bad with it. Uh, there's things that I, when I look at it, I said, geez, I wish we had done this. You know, I wish we'd have put this button on it. Or it's, it's only got like a, a two or three cringe factor, you know, when yeah. you got... <laughs> you know, and then again, that, that has to do with low budget, timing, and some people, you know, the cast and crew were on board, some of the, uh, the producers uh, weren't on board and were working against us, and that's what works against a low budget film. Everybody has to be on board working together to create this thing. When you have enemies in, in, in within your ranks, it makes it tougher. Yeah. So you guys have this idea about killer clowns from outer space. You have the idea of a sci-fi comedy movie. <coughs> and clearly years later, the movie, the movie has proven to be successful, popular, people love it. At the time, when you had this idea and you pitch it to the studio, what were they thinking? I mean, what, were they, what was their reaction? Amazing, man. Yeah, oh, so. yeah, I don't, we just had, this idea for making this kind of a sci-fi comedy, we had it all in our heads how we would create this world of characters. When we pitched it, I don't think the guys knew what the hell we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, we, went, we went in with a 20-page treatment, a clown maquette, a little sculpture Stephen had done of a clown standing up with a little toy ray gun, and a, a one-sheet trolley had done of a clown standing on a mountain hilltop overlooking a sleepy little town. A friend of ours, Fred Fuchs, had been working with us at Shelley Duvall's Fairytale Theater, had a friend who had just come into some film financing money. We went in there, we, we did a pitch, like a 15, 20 minute pitch, told him the title, Kill the Clowns from Outer Space. He says, I like it, let's make this movie. And I think, he just, I think he just did it based on the title. In his mind, I can sell that. I can sell a movie with that title. So and it was, he didn't care what it was. It was our, our very first feature film pitch, and we sold it in the room. Uh, you know, how did you get to do that? No, and low-budget filmmakers, you know, they, they, you know, they laugh when, when we say we had a low budget because in 1986, 87, we got 2.1 million dollars for a low-budget movie. 1.8. <laughs> well, that it, again, we got the. When did we get 1.8? From the beginning. <laughs> we told me 2.1. <laughs> no, but the point is, again, the. Uh, the, the, the money didn't go certainly to the art department because that's what Kyoto Brothers brought in spades. Um, we had, you know, the, 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 the clown budget was $25,000 for all the clown makeups and, and heads and hands and feet. 
uh, the wardrobe was a separate budget, and I think the entire uh, visual effects budget for the optical effects done by Fantasy Two, which are Academy Award winners for Terminator Two, um, they uh, they got I think one hundred and eighty thousand dollars for that for those visual effects. So by by those standards, it's pretty low. Uh, yeah, the, the in other words, they pulled in a lot of favors from their buddies. The, the, art, the art of the movie was uh, by far the lowest budgeted portion of the movie. Actually, Fantasy II got seventy-five thousand. Matt Penny's were another twenty-five thousand. The visual effects were a uh, hundred thousand dollars. It's a pretty, pretty mark. And that was just calling in on the community of all our friends, our our network. Right. That that it was a hundred thousand dollars for the visuals, eighty thousand dollars for the sets. That's where I got one hundred and eighty. Exactly. One thing that we did have that was pretty good that a lot of times movies don't have today is we had, you know, a week of rehearsal and six weeks, I believe, to shoot it. Um, I mean, I just worked on a $20 million film. They shot the whole thing in four weeks. I mean, and everybody was going insane to try to get this movie out. So. And then we had executives who had a crisis picture going on in Sri Lanka and they left the country. So they left us in Santa Cruz alone for six weeks. <laughs> Now, I want to ask Suzanne Grant, the clowns here, what your impression was when you, were at, <laughs> when you were asked to be a part of this film. How did you feel when you were approached and said, you know, we want you to be in this film? I was working, and my agent called me and said, oh my God, Suzanne, I just read the most amazing script. It is going to be a cult classic, and it will make you famous for your whole life. <laughs> that's what she told me. No, I'm serious. That's what she told me. Sarah Shadeen. I didn't know that. She said, you have got to be in this movie. And I was really tired, because I just finished working on another film. She said, it's not a choice. You have to do it. It's I, I remember. You had just come up a night shoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two right. films, right back to back. Yeah. Wow. And you read it, and? and? And I loved it, and then I met you. And I wanted to work with anyway. you, too. You did it anyway. No, I mean, it, was, it, was a, it was so unique and so interesting and so funny. Hey, guys. Um, you had scenes like in the uh, police station when Mooney had the hand in his back and he was puppeteered. Uh, those hold up. Now, Movies kind of became a little extreme now. Are you afraid that if you do it campy enough, it's going to go straight to DVD? Or you guys going to try to get hit cinemas and adapt to the way movies are now? There's a little more blood and guts. Even children want that now. Yeah, that's just it. That's what Charlie was addressing. We want to push it close, but I don't think we want to. I think we want the sensibility. We want the fear and the chill. And I think we will try to achieve that without going to the gore. Uh, and it's not, it's not my intention to give every audience what they want. I feel comfortable that if we make the film that we like, that we enjoy, I think you guys are going to enjoy it. And the hope is to take it theatrical. I mean, that is the basis of the conversations we're having right now. We don't want to just have this relegated to DVD or video on demand or streaming. We want people to see this experience it in 3D in a movie theater. Well, yeah, I mean... I don't think they have 3D that's really working in, in the home. So if it goes straight to DVD, what's the point of doing it in 3D, you know? Yeah, I mean, our whole idea with this is to make a Killer Clowns event movie. You know what I mean? To totally make, almost feel like an interactive experience of all the stuff that you love about Killer Clowns, like we were talking about. I mean, um, I mean, I, I, we've all said at a certain point, we, 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 as we were creating the concept that there was, you know, we couldn't think of a better movie to make, to, to, do, to be 3D. And I'm not even, I, we're, none of us are really fans of 3D for its own sake. But we said, when it comes to a movie like Killer Clowns, it has to be. So we're actually kind of, you know, we're, 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 we're going to have theatrical distribution because that's part of the, uh, of the demand that we're making. How big we get, is, is really kind of up to us and up to the audience because it's probably going to be a situation where we get guaranteed a certain amount of screens and then if we test, if test audiences say, boy, we really like that, then they'll give us a little bit more and then if the audiences kind of really come out and support it, 
then it'll open up even even more. So that's why when this becomes real and we actually get the green light, we're really gonna have to get people out to come and see this the first week it's out because it's gonna be, in all likelihood, it will be a limited release and then we have to build that momentum. We have to show them that people want this and let's go out to 1,500, 2,000 theaters. So we're gonna need a lot of help getting that viral campaign going too because a lot of, you know, we're gonna have to really get the internet sites going and, you know, build up a lot of, uh, a lot of momentum with it, uh, but through non-traditional forms. Yeah, the, the ideal scenario would be, we hope when they green light it, once we start showing what we have in mind and they start seeing the footage that we're producing, that they'll get more excited and say, you know what, this could be bigger. And it has happened where people said, you know what, we're going to throw more at this, you know, because we think this could be something big. So that's what we're hoping, that the work we're going to put into this is going to impress the finances to be able to uh, support us in a bigger and better way. That's what I'm hoping for. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. But before you guys leave, we are going to be playing the film. And I want you guys to introduce it, speak about it. I'll let the crowd know. We can do that. When, uh, when are we going to get in another? Now, here. The two screens beside you. Right now, we're... Well, you know what? This is not the big, big screen. Okay. Yeah, you know, you're sort of seeing it in stereo. If you look back and forth, left and right, real quick, maybe it'll be in 3D. <laughs> well, I don't think there's anything to say. You guys know the film pretty well. Is there anybody who's going to see it for the first time here? Oh, you're going to be handy. All right. <laughs> What's really good about it is, with this kind of crowd, it's a really, it's a, it's a yeah. crowd movie. When you see it with your friends at a party, everybody's. They know the joke's coming up, they say the lines. Let's make it a real event here. I think you guys are gonna get a big kick out of it, more participation you guys throw into it. Yeah, don't be afraid to scream out. The movie won't get insulted. <laughs> I'll tell you really quick, the coolest thing about this movie is that these three brothers, the reason why I think this movie is, is so cool is because these three brothers started when they were little kids making little home movies and monster movies. This was a freaking love and passion for these guys since they, practically since they came out of their mothers. The mother, only one. <laughs> and, you know, they, they built, they, they came out to Hollywood and kept on doing it, and finally they got an opportunity to make their own movie after doing a lot of stuff from other people. And so this was this, this is the dream of a bunch of, of, of three brothers, three little kids that what they always wanted to do, and that love and passion is in there, and that's what makes this movie so cool. Oh, fantastic.